Hi, Misha here, and did not really expect to be doing another video on this rifle so soon, but here we are. These were shown at SHOT Show this year, just a couple of weeks ago, and kind of to my surprise, a few people were under the misconception that this was a new gun but it is not we've done at least three videos total but for public information and with a little bit more new info we're gonna revisit again <laughs> re-revisit the FIME group Russian Molot Vepper FM RPK 74-33 and this is to date the only and probably will ever be the only semi-auto civilian legal Russian military style RPK 74M to come into the USA so here it is in the box. Comes with this grease paper. Comes with some paperwork in a plastic bag. Manual. Pretty standard arsenal stuff. You get a new Russian cleaning kit. They will fit in the buttstock. And you get one 30 round circle. 10 magazine, although any standard mag will fit. So, let's get this out of the box. Alright, here we go. Got the provided 30 round mag in. Got it out on its uh, bipod. One nice thing about the 30 round mag, unlike the longer ones, like the 45, it won't monopod. It's just long enough when sitting down to not hit it. Now, of course, when you have this actually up in your shoulder, you have a lot more space, but just sitting on a table, yeah. And funny thing, I've, I've left these on in some pictures and people don't understand this is just a rubber guard for the charging handle so if you see those in pictures it's just to make sure this doesn't chew through the side of the box common thing well uh, for those who don't know and are curious the specs on this guy Chambered for 545 by 39 M74. About 42 inches overall length. We have a 23 and a quarter inch long heavy cold hammer forged chrome lined barrel. Also, the gas block is chrome lined. It is threaded 14 by 1 left hand, so standard Kalashnikov. It comes from the factory with a standard muzzle nut. Standard modern front sight. We have pretty standard modern RPK stamped metal bipod still has a 45 degree gas block we do have the cleaning rod under the barrel RPK modern ribbed hand guards with heat shield inside we do have the correct windage and elevation adjustable thousand meter rear sight Smooth, reinforced, heavy thickness top cover. 
pretty standard AK safety 1.5 millimeter heavy duty stamped receiver with the bulged therefore heavy duty front trunnion there are no magwell dimples that's not something the RPK 74 ever had riveted trigger guard standard modern mag catch standard AK pistol grip side folding paddle style buttstock these stocks are held on with two tangs top and one on the bottom they do have a ribbed butt plate with trapdoor for a cleaning kit on the other side you'll notice this cutout in the stock that's to give clearance for the standard scope rail I don't know if I can fold this over one handed. Let me try real quick. These can be pretty stiff. I think this one's going to be stiff too. Slippery table, guys. <laughs> but I do it for you. There we go. So, see, can even be done one handed by a blind guy flush fit in the back, no ugly block hanging off. Let's see there. Sling swivel folds over with it. Front swivel's there. So yeah. And to unfold the stock, there's another catch inside here. See if I can do it this way. You're getting a real up close look. There we go. They do make these a little easier to unfold because of how paratroopers need to deploy them. Well, I thought it was going to be easier to unfold it, but slick table. I do apologize. There we go. At least you know you're getting the unedited truth here. <laughs> but very tough, very overbuilt, very military. So, let's show a bit of shooting footage we had last year with mine. And then we'll come back and talk about pricing, as well as do a bit of comparing with some other models. FM, RPK 74. So, the Vepper FM RPK7433 is a semi-auto RPK74M. What does that mean? In the past, we've done a video checking out the AK74 versus the AK74M, which is a modernized version. And there are quite a few small but numerous differences. Well, with the RPK, there are differences, but they're not as many. Molot was more consistent. But to talk about a couple, I brought out an RPK 74. This is actually a build by Vector using what were imported as Bulgarian 74 kits, although they were actually Russian Molots that were out of Bulgaria. This is an original barrel build with the really only US part being the Nodak NDS receiver. 
This is wearing the transitional plum furniture. Originally the RPK-74, like the RPK before it would have wood. But they started going over to plum in early 1980s. And here is my FM RPK-74, the one you just saw being shot. And here are some mags because, like I said, they like to monopod. 45 round was standard. Originally they were made of Bakelite, as people call it. It's actually a fiberglass reinforced material, AG4. It was originally introduced for the 762 39 cartridge in 1968. and was made for the 74, 545 through the late 70s early 80s and was replaced by polymer now this is a modern molot black fiberglass reinforced polymer mag with you see the vertical oh, excuse me horizontal ribbing also 45 rounds there was also a horizontally ribbed plum one but I'm sorry I don't have a plum so they did make plum to go with these but I just don't have one and here, it's one of the newest mag styles, the 60 round quad stack. Now this one's actually made by Puff Gun, but it's a copy of the Molot. Works pretty good. Metal, lug, and all that good stuff. But yeah, they never went to a drum, but they did end up going to a quad stack. So yeah, not a ton of differences. On the original 74, the stock was fixed. You know, just typical trunnion on the top, paddle style, ribbed butt plate. They did make an RPKS 74 with a side folder though. Also, as standard, an RPK 74 did not have a scope rail. This could be added as an option as the RPKN-74. Receiver and all that's pretty well the same. Sights. Plum handguards. Barrel hardware is pinned on. front side here birdcage flash rider and 14 millimeter threads but what about on the one here well the most noticeable difference is that it is now standardized on the modern black polymer handguards and furniture. The side folding club foot stock is now a standard feature for the M. Uh, flip back over for a sec. The scope rail is now standard equipment as opposed to being optional. 74Ms can have a standard pistol grip or they can have this more modern oversized mullet grip. a little bit of difference in the barrel hardware. The gas block and retaining ring for the cleaning rod are now dimple pressed on much like on the AK-74M. However the front sight, and I've looked into this as best I can, the front sight tower usually seems to be pinned on still which makes sense because the bipod is behind it so you'd probably want to be able to remove your front sight base to get to the bipod the bipod itself is slightly different but no real improvement it's just manufacturing changes and they're quite small likewise the flash rider is slightly different 
it's a little bit thinner profile compared with the original but I doubt it will be picked up on camera because it is a very small difference also the front sight is made just a slight bit difference you can maybe see in the ears maybe not <laughs> but little things like that not big differences really the RPK74M just standardizes on modern features like the folding stock, the scope rail, and also modern magazines and whatnot. And while the 74M is still very much the standard in the Russian Army today, there have been newer versions like the RPK16 that may replace it, but even older RPK. 74s are still in service, really not being replaced until they're worn out. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Well, let's go back over to the range and then I'll come back here with some final thoughts. FM RPK 74. Alright, enough on the history. We have plenty of vids on that. Here are the new one is and it has the quad stack in it. What's nice about these is they really don't hang down a lot further than the uh, 30 rounders. Quite a bit shorter still with 33% uh, more capacity than the older ones. So these guns are very reliable as well built as anything. Mollot's just one of those brands you really don't find any complaints on, at least I would say there's fewer complaints on Molot Vepers online than any other Kalashnikov. Since this was built to be a light machine gun, being fired full auto more than a standard AK would have been, and if it's going to be fired in semi-auto, it's going to last a very long time. What's the downside? And there is a big one. First off though, just to point out a couple of small changes I made with mine, I did put on the Molot oversized pistol grip just because I had one laying around versus the standard arsenal grip they come with. And these just come with a basic muzzle nut, which would have been correct on an early RPK and 76239 but by the RPK 74 like I mentioned we have the bird cage so I put on a bird cage other than that it's pretty well good to go get a good sling I put an RPK sling on it this is the uh, the double hook type the uh, other RPK man you saw has the pad and of course get some correct mags for it, be it 45 or 60 round. Although there's nothing wrong with a 30 round Bulgarian. Very good mag that these come with. And they work great with standard 30 round AK-74 mags. So the downside. Money. The Molot factory was sanctioned in June of 2017. Meaning that after that date, American companies could not do business at all with them. This shut the supply of Vepers down immediately, as well as spare parts, anything. Existing orders could come in, but that was it. That's why all of these are going to have 2016 or 2017 Trunyan dates. You won't see in 18 or 19. 
even though this one just came in, the rifle it was converted from came in back in 2017. Meaning the supply was short. Now, Fime, Arsenal's sister company, had been selling the Vepper FM 47 and 74 for a couple of years, the standard 16-inch version, which was very much a sporter model. It had a pistol grip, but no long barrel, no bipod. It wasn't really an RPK RPK. It was distinctly a sporter. Right before the sanctions came down, they were gearing up to do this correct RPK style, namely having the long barrel and bipod but they never got to release it because of the sanctions. Prior to these, the only RPK style Molot to come in was the Vepper 1V, sold briefly by IO, Royal Tiger, back in 2013. Only a few hundred, maybe a thousand of those came in. And all of them were in 556 NATO 223. They did not do 545 or even 76239. And a lot of people saw those. They were good guns. Again, they're factory guns. But they waited, hoping for the, the Warsaw pack, the Comblock calibers, that never came to be. Even parts kits, like the other gun you saw at the Plum Furniture, only came in in small batches and limited numbers. And are quite pricey today. meaning the supply for RPK-74s of any kind has always been limited. And these, we don't know how many FIME has made or will make. They come in with the long barrel. You can tell because of the dimpled hardware and all that good stuff. They come in with the folding trunnion, but instead of the club foot stock and pistol grip, it has a thumb hole stock. So to convert it, they pull the thumb hole off, pop a small weld off the bottom of the folding mechanism, put on these. They come with a double stack magwell, but they do not have a bullet guide on top of the trunnion, meaning as imported, they can only feed from 10 round mags. So Arsenal, well, fine, really. Rivets in a bullet guide. They also install the bipod because for some reason the ATF doesn't like bipods on imports. And they give it a removable muzzle nut on the 14mm threads. So the conversion work is pretty straightforward. Leaving all the good stuff Russian, receiver, trunnions, complete bolt group, top cover, most importantly probably the barrel. The US parts typically are the trigger group and furniture. And the only time you really saw these was when KVAR would put one up for auction on Gunbroker. Now, I did talk about my thoughts on the way KVAR has done business lately on my personal channel. So, you can check that out if you're interested. But either way, that's usually where you saw these. Well, at SHOT Show this year, they had the RPK at their booth. So a lot of people thought this was a new gun. And they were wondering where the parts came from, how they got around the sanction. No, it's the same thing that they've had. They just decided to be a little more upfront with them. So these are maybe perhaps slightly easier to find. But since they're abusing now prohibited from import parts, the supply will always be limited and they know it. Before doing this video I checked KVAR's website and they had these 
for a retail price, I kid you not, of $7,999.95. And showing is sold out even at that. Now, on Gunbroker, they have not been going for nearly that much. Typically, around 5000 Still a shitload of money, I know. But, people pay more for Type 1 or even Type 2 builds on U.S. receivers and other stuff. What people do with their money is what they do with their money. This is a true Molot factory gun, not a kit gun. And it is a true import. And it is extremely unlikely that the sanctions will be lifted any decade soon. So that's why people pay what they pay. And for people like me that are RPK fans as well as Russian fans, it is basically a grail gun. And with just a few part swaps, you can have an extremely authentic AK from Russia. Specifically, an RPK 74M. So that's the allure, and that's why these were a show and people took notice. Who knows what the future will hold? Who knows how many they will make? Who knows how collectible they may or may not get? I think most people will just buy these and keep them in their box. But my opinion is pretty clear. It's a fun gun to shoot. You're not going to put any damage on it by shooting it. In my opinion, if you own something like this, enjoy it. Take it out, shoot it. Take care of it, but take it out, shoot it, enjoy it, because life's too short. But that's just my personal take. Alrighty, guys. Like I said, this wasn't really a planned revisit of the Fime RPK, but here we are. So I hope you enjoyed this ad hoc video. If you found it interesting, you might check out our AK playlist where we have more history and other variations that we talk about from Romania and Bulgaria and elsewhere. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.